I'm sure most prehistoric fish connoisseurs would know the dunk, formerly known as Dunkleosteus, the armoured fish which rose in popularity upon its discovery due to its build and, well, thought to be enormous size. But hold up, did you hear those key words? Thought to be. Because oh boy, did the devs decide to slap this fish with a big nerf, big enough to make you think that it had done something personally to them. When first uncovering this kitted out placoderm, it was clear that it was an impressive predator. Its key selling point was its head and upper torso, which was fashioned with jointed armor, as well as its unique jaws, which made it the definition of a living, breathing guillotine. It was clear that this fish of the Devonian was no joke and an apex predator, but it seemed we may have just overestimated how big it truly was. Some early studies, such as William's 2007 paper, and excuse me if I pronounce this wrong, but Ferron et al.'s 2017 paper, placed the dunk between 10 and 8.7 meters respectively. That would put it at the size, if not larger, than our own notorious orcas. Ferron based their size proportions off the upper jaw perimeters of sharks. So, why doesn't this work? Well, first off, the dunk isn't as closely related to sharks as you might expect. As I mentioned before, it was much more so a placoderm, meaning it was part of the armoured fish faction. This made for an unreliable size proportion as it had a small skull and elongated body in previous studies, which didn't make too much sense for its head structure. And remember, all of these studies judge the dunk's size of the armoured skull and upper torso because no other part of this guy was fossilised. However, recently, there was a study published by Russell Engelman in Diversity, which showed a newer and more accurate methodology to estimate the dunk's size. Now, I'll keep it simple, but the way that Engelman carried out this was far more reliable than previously completed. He did this through calculating the dunk's size in relation from its eyes to the back of the gills. This was backed up as the study wasn't just done on the dunk, as that would improve reliability. But rather, he tried this methodology on a number of other armoured fish, whether living or extinct, and each one he tried it with confirmed the correct size. This hence bolstered his study and provided evidence for it being reliable. So, let's take a second and go back to what we originally believed about the first apex predator of the high seas. It measured 8 to 10 metres in size. As much as I wish that this was the case, the newer study shrinks it down a notch. Alright, maybe a couple notches. Currently, the dunk is thought to measure less than half than what was previously estimated, being far more likely to reach 3 to 4 metres in length with lacking evidence to show that it could go beyond a 5 meter mark to begin with. This predator of the Devonian went from the size of an orca all the way down to below great white sharks as well as many of the other predators in our current oceans. Ultimately, this quote unquote nerf, shrink, downgrade, whatever you want to say, doesn't make the dunk any less fascinating. Our improving knowledge on ancient marine biology isn't something to be sad or angry about even if you were a fan of the massive dunk. If anything, it makes this oversized chunky tuna more interesting going from what we normally think a large, slow moving, simple predator to a quick pursuit predator that still had a guillotine on its mouth. So for that, you got to give it at least a few points. It's interesting and fascinating to say the very least. So we've reached the end of the video and I know it's a bit shorter today, but hey, there's no reason for me to stretch this out to like 10, 15, 20 minutes when I'm just reporting on the dunk size. As they say, keep it short and keep it simple. As always, if you enjoyed, then don't forget to leave a like and to subscribe. And who knows, I may even do a longer in-depth case study on the dunk in which I will talk more so about the size, where it lived, its prey, as well as why they use a specific method in order to calculate the size. But that all depends if you guys want that. Anyways, I'll catch you all next time. See ya.